Okay, welcome back everyone. We're gonna start our next class this evening. In this one, I prepared to show you my game from a, 20, a 2014 World Open Tournament. I'm playing against Grandmaster Wojtkiewicz. Unfortunately, he passed away about 10 years ago. He was a very, very good player. And uh, in this game, um, I managed to win a nice positional uh, game, and but there were some nice tactics in the opening. So we start out with the opening, and everybody here should know the name of this opening? Slav. Uh -huh. Slav. Slav. Raise your hand, Neil. Neil? Slav. Slav what? Slav defense. Slav defense. When you're playing black, there's a defense usually, right? So when you're playing white, it's, you know, it's just the opening, but you know, with black, usually it's a Slav defense, Nimzo Indian defense. So it's lots of defenses. Okay. Defense. I took to a little surprise to my opponent. What is the name of this variation of the Slav defense that I'm playing? Now we, we know we established the name of the opening, everybody Slav defense. What is the name of this variation? Should be more hands, should be more hands now about this line. Okay, we've got a couple of hands. Claudio probably knows this too, no, Claudio? Okay, Ashi Adik. Exchange, guys. Exchange variation of the Slav defense. Everybody got it? Exchange variation. Because after you take, you're exchanging it. So it leads to a kind of a symmetrical play. Bishop f4. A6. This is a very interesting move. It's a waiting move, but it's also useful at some point controlling the b5 square. But what's the drawback of this move? We you know that in chess, every time you make a pawn a move, you weaken the position, right? In here, this pawn move weakens something. Kneel. Weakens the square b6. Yes. Weakens this, and now this square, it's more, it's easier to access because not going to be so easy to play b6 because of that weakness. And now you don't want to play e3 here because if you play e3, he has a strong bishop g4. So e3 is not good. e3 is out of question. So the correct move here is rook to c1. You're waiting for the black's next move. Then you will play e3, okay? Because you want to see where is he going to put the bishop on f5 or is he going to play six because he's not going to go here because that move runs into a very powerful move which move i'm talking about this is not good because this is not a pin you normally it's good to put it there if it's a pin so this is not a pin ashish 95 absolutely and now knight is very active and this is vulnerable so he plays queen b6. Yeah, he played this move queen b6, actually. This is a pretty rare move. I, I don't think this is particularly a very good move, but he wanted to experiment. So how, how should I deal with this move? What should I do? Because it doesn't look like it's, it's that easy, right? Mm -hmm. Correct, yes. Knight to a4, that's what I played. Tempo. Gaining a tempo and hitting that queen. So the point here, he's going to give a check. And now I need to block this check somehow. I cannot block it with my queen because I drop it. So I have to either go back with a bishop or knight. So, new. Correct hitting the queen. Queen goes back to d8, but he wastes too much time by doing this. And now a very important move is queen b3, activating the queen and getting ready to insert this knight to a very strong square on b6. That knight will be very, very powerful and strong on b6. Okay? Knight b6, attacking the rook, and 
Very nice. So he plays e6. Knight b6, as explained why. And now I play e3. Just trying to catch up on that development. I'm not worried about knight a5 at all because I have bishop a5. So I'm happy about that. Knight e4. He's activating his queen. Uh, uh, sorry, activating the knight. Is this a correct move? Is he missing something here? Why to play? Because it looks a bit dubious, no? A lot of queen moves are played, and now he's jumping in with no development. Bit dubious. How, Neil? How you guys can try to take advantage of this? Slightly dubious play, let's put it this way. Well, got to calculate, Claudio. Bishop a6, pawn takes a6. Rook c6, bishop d7, and then you're pinned. You cannot take the queenie. And if you drop back, not bishop d3, ashish. Bishop d3 is just a normal move. Calculate, ashish. And? Rook takes b6, losing your knight too. <laughs> Don't rush, okay? Let's see here. I want somebody who can calculate. Calculate a couple of moves, guys. And find a way to perhaps win. Win some material. So the bishop a6. That's a Claudio say that. Bishop a6. Bishop a6. Rook c6. Bishop d7. Sorry, what? Aren't you like losing some material here? Yeah, I mean, if nothing else, I mean. And if you start counting now, Extra bishop. Oh. Right, Ashish? Count. Count and calculate, Ashish. Count and calculate, remember, yeah? All right. So what did I play here? Knight takes d5? Interesting suggestion by Claudio. Let me take that first, Claudio. <laughs> I know, I know you have some... <laughs> yeah, I know that. <laughs> okay. So, so this is out, right? This move. This is out. What did I play? Adi. Queen takes c8. Uh -uh. No. Nope. You need to have a follow up. Aha, uh -huh, sheesh. Good work. Knight c8, taking the bishop. So he cannot take back with a rook because the pawn is hanging here, correct? Queen takes one. So he has to take with a queen. You're going to see that. He took here first. I took. He if he takes now here, what is the tactic? Bishop a6, d8, d7. That is Neil right there. Yes, Neil. Strong play. Yeah. And now, because the queen is simply overworked. Okay? Queen is simply overworked. Cannot move, and you take on b8. Okay. Take. Okay. 
Maybe, maybe it should be four. He realized he's losing a pawn, so he decided, you know, let me play this way. So try not to lose. Because the knight is kind of trapped, yeah? Pawn takes? The bishop d2 check and wins your queen. Now you still want to get to that position where you have that idea, yeah? You have that bishop a6 idea, but he's trying to make it difficult. Huh? Mm, I think you have another way to force it. I think you have another way, Claudio, to force him to take on d2. Because essentially you want to, you essentially you want the bishop to, uh, you want to move the bishop from there. Absolutely, a3, questioning the bishop, and he has to take it. What else he can do? He cannot drop back on here because you have rook c6, so he takes check, and now again he cannot take back with the rook because you take here, so he has to take with this, and now you already know what to do. Neil, yes, bishop a6. He thought, okay, at least this way now maybe he will have some contraplay or something because my king is in the middle. And now I go back, bishop e2. Of course, if I can get my king to g1, my rook over, I'm just winning here. I'm up a pawn. So he's going to try to complicate the position. So he plays queen d7. Now I want to do basically castle by hand. Also, we call the manual castling. How are we going to do that, guys? Neil. Rook hd1. Rook hd1. Now he goes queen d6, attacking my pawn in the corner. That pawn needs to be pre defended, protected. How? What's the best move? G3. G3. Blockading that diagonal. And again, I'm just a couple of moves away from putting the king in. So he plays e5, breaking. Take. King e1. Now I'm just about to play king f1 and I feel safe. So he goes d4. Play d4. Absolutely, Caleb. That's exactly what I did. Queen e3. Forcing the exchange because when you're ahead, you're never afraid to trade. Remember? He tries to keep the knight, but who is better here? Bishop or a knight in this kind of positions? Neil. Bishop. bishop. When the fight is on two flanks or two sides of the board, the bishop is more powerful than. But we can also understand him. If he takes here, not only he's down a pawn, but look at my rooks. They're ready to come into that seventh rank and up a pawn and with a very big advantage. Winning endgame. So he went here. Now, how are we gonna win this though, huh? Ashish. Rooks belong where in the end game? Seventh rank. Seventh rank. Everybody should remember that. In the end game, rooks belong there. Now, pawn needs to be protected, right? King f2, rook e6. Okay, there are many ways how to win, but I, I choose just a simple plan. Bishop b5. Now the knight is passive. And now look at that, bishop is attacking there. Bishop is always well placed on d5. It's just centralized. Okay? Dominating that knight. He goes here, and now I realize rook endgame is winning. Let me just go for it. b4. 
Strong Rook on a 7th rank, extra pawn, and a fixed weakness on a6. Rook h6, h4. The rest is matter of technique. h5, attacking that rook. Two connected pass pawns, and you know the strength of those pass pawns. When they're connected, they're very strong. Check, king f3. A4. I'm using the f I'm using the fact that he cannot just take on B4 because of the background checkmate. So that's why I push. Push. Threatening take on G7. And now, how you want to try to continue pushing those pawns? Because that's the key. The pawns you have to try to get them pushed. I could. What else? I want to play a5, but I can't because the b-pawn is hanging. So what would be a good way to do that? A d. Correct. Now, when you're ahead, you're never afraid to trade. And now, time to push. Further they get stronger, further they, they get a stronger check. See, it's funny, the king is, he cannot do like a, he cannot even give me a check, I have rook d7, so he went here. Push. Connecting them. What's the idea? Take on Not yet, push. Yeah. Push, put the pawns on the maximum position, Caleb, maximum. Maximize the push, okay? Now he goes here and he's trying to get his own counter play, but too little too late. Who is going to find the finishing touch here to score the victory here? Raise your hands, please. Raise your hand if you see the winning idea here. Caleb. Perfect. He resigned in a view of the following variation. Takes. Takes, threatening to queen. Remember, when the pawns, you have two pawns on a six ranks, this pawns cannot be protected. So now he has to go here. Okay. And now queen versus knight. So that's that's the end of the game. Okay? So let's go over this opening part one more time. So this 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 was an important victory. Uh, helped me to win the tournament. So let's go over this one more time. Go. Everybody, name of the opening? Slav defense. Slav defense. What's the name of the variation? Exchange, Exchange variation, correct. So now, if anybody plays the Slav, you have something. You can do something, okay? You can try to play this, this opening. Now, what do we do? Continue. Get the knights out first. Ashish, knights before bishops, okay? And now we play bishop f4. Now a6. It's a useful move controlling the b5 square, but what is the drawback of this move? What is the drawback of this move? Neil. Uh, weakens b6 and c5. Weakens b6 and c5. Absolutely. So what do we do? Huh? Yes? Well, he played, he played here first. Now attacking the pawn, knight a4, excellent. Check up. Bishop d2, getting a tempi. And now a very important move here. He wants to get his bishop out. I don't want to allow him to do that. So which move I have to play to do that? Excellent, queen b3. 
not only putting pressure, also getting on b6. Got it? Now he goes e6, knight b6, excellent. Rook b8, knights, ashish, knight c8, queen c8. You're not developed yet. So e3 first, okay? Don't rush, ashish. Knight e4, and now knight c8. Again, the variation is the following. If he takes, what do you do? Adi. He takes Adi. And that's the crushing idea. Okay? Taking and winning everything. So he takes. Knight takes d2. Queen c8. Perfect. Perfect. Again, again, we're using the fact that the overworked piece, black has an overworked piece. And which piece I'm referring to as overworked, everyone? Queen. Queen, Queen is overworked, guarding this and guarding this. That's a typical overworked piece, okay? For you. So, what is the idea? Huh? He castles. Push B2. Okay, Ashish, just, yeah, big difference. Remember, Rook on open file. He's going to play E5. So he goes here, Queen D6. I actually thought about F4 here for a moment because it kind of keeps a grip on it. So probably it's a good move as well, F4. I just didn't want to weaken the position. Because he really doesn't have much here. If he plays rook f8, then he doesn't even have that. Because of which move? Nice. And we take it with the rook. Okay. Take, take. Queen e3. We should be five. Bishop b3 and once the bishop is centralized only five it's winning position okay again my is my game against Wojtkiewicz okay from 2004 okay we have a couple of uh, uh, other positions I want to show you so we continue working on some of this attacking ideas Black to play. This one is black to play. So let's spend a couple of minutes here and try to see how to win this position, okay? Well, calculate Ashish a little bit. I mean, there's not much, you don't have that many options here. So that's why, that's why this makes it a little bit easier because there are not so many options you have at the moment you have to play like a grandmaster Vladimir Akopian 2700 grandmaster you have to calculate one two four four moves Ashish you have four moves that's with the best defense. Well, I don't know about kind of. That means you need to do a little bit more work. The whole sequence is six moves, actually. Okay, okay. Whole sequence that results in a clear cut advantage for you. Okay, 93, Ashish. I think most of you were calculating that, correct? Okay. Okay, bishop c3. Black, 
Yeah, no, no, no sorry, this is, this is uh, king e1. <coughs> sorry, sorry, one more at a time. Queen g2 by Ashish. Okay. Can I take this? Huh? Well, you might get made it now once I go to the discovery check with the rook. You gotta be careful. You have to play queen g6 here. And rook d3, okay, it's, it's, it's not so clear, yeah? So this is not so clear, okay? Uh, what's the question? Uh, here? We could, but. King E2? Yeah, but that's not so clear. There's a queen F4 move and... Okay, this is correct, guys. This is correct. Right here, you just, you just need to make sure you don't rush here because queen G2 is a very tempting move to play. Uh, bishop D4? No, queen d6 is. Rook to g2 here. Rook h2, that's correct. Good job, yeah. Now, the threat is queen g1 check. Queen e3 and mate, so that's correct. So now he plays here. Queen f1. Rook G2, what is the threat? Rook G2. But you playing the rook first, right? Yeah. yeah, but Rook G1, I go King D2. It's not like it's a mate. It's not a mate immediately. I mean, you have some attacks still, but... The rook G2 is actually correct. This move is the best move. Rook H2. Because you're threatening... You're threatening... Uh, you're threatening to play uh, queen g1. So he plays this way, queen f1, and now Neil? Check. Uh, f5 is hanging with the check, so you don't want to drop that. Okay, can we raise our hands? Because a lot of you just guys saying moves. Uh, and l just raise your hand if you think you have a good move. I have a threat of queen f5 check. You don't want that to happen. Because that could reverse the color, reverse the roles of who is checkmating who. So please raise your hands. Yes, idea? Ay, 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 check. And now it's unclear who is mating who, yeah? All right. We don't want to draw Ashish. What is the winning move here, Caleb? Come on. Excellent, Rook F2. Now, Rook is under, Queen is under attack. If he moves away, you got a Queen G1 mate. So he has to go Queen here and check. That's your solution, guys. That's your solution. Winning the queen and the game. Got it? Because the goal was to win the game or at least the queen. You win the queen, most likely you're going to win the game. So let's see how this happened again. Deep calculation huh, by Akopian. Yeah, it's different. Ako Vladimir Akopian. You probably, the, he, he was a finalist of the 1999 world... Uh, 
uh, World Cup. So they called actually World Championship at the time. So what's the move? Continue nil. No. Perfect. Okay. Excellent. All right. Well, good job, everybody. Thank you for joining this class, and we'll see you next week, okay? Thank you.